You may proceed, Mr. President. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> okay, uh, item 2 on the agenda is recognition of visitors. I believe <coughs> Frank Rossi signed in. You'd like to speak? Um, I come to give you kind of an overview of what I've been trying to do since last February and um, what the great success we have had. And also some things that have come to light just recently. Uh, what I did is prepare you a packet of uh, some things that or information that I acquired, uh, some through Todd, and then there. Uh, and I just want to go through those briefly. The first, like, four or five pages of that packet uh, include the original uh, estimate of the track done under Bob Wolf for the architectural vision group of the people that designed the school. Okay. And uh, the second page of that indicates their cost estimates for everything that would be done up there on the field. Okay, uh, and this is the cost estimate that he gave me in June uh, of this year. Well, I looked at that and said, well, that's an awful lot of money to consider at the, at the point of what I was going at. So I asked him to give me uh, another estimate that would include keeping the stands where they're at because when I first did the measurements of the track up there 10 years ago I knew that we could fit an eight lane all the way to track up there uh, we would have to go into the far side and cut that down and maybe lose those stands I don't know for sure but the way the design looks like it would but it would, prevent, it would keep us from having to shift the water and everything to the other side of the track, which is a, a cost to us. And uh, so he came back with an estimate for just the football field and the track uh, and the walkways and you know, whatever at a price of about a million and a half. And uh, he also gave me a, um, at least a colored picture of what it basically looked like. And the one thing he didn't include in this, and I, I know maybe part of it was our fault, was the uh, field house that they had in the original plans, which he had down at almost a million dollars in the field house, uh, which I think would be a whole lot cheaper. But it would go up in that upper right hand corner where it is on the first, uh, the first day. Okay. Uh, then uh, there is, of course, a picture of what it looks like from the sky. Then there are three letters that follow that. Uh, one is the local businessman, one is to alumni, and one is to corporates, executives. The first letter I sent out in uh, approximately June. I know it says March 10th, that's the date I made it up, but I don't think I got it out until May or June sometime. Uh, the second letter I posted on the website that I have for Waterloo <coughs> Stadium Improvement. <coughs> and uh, the third one I sent to some corporate executives. The people that I sent this to, uh, there are addresses for them the back of you. These are all the people that I sent a letter to. Now, out of all those people, there were only five that I could not contact by letter that I got letters back. Okay. Um, either because they, they had post office box that I didn't know what it was or something to that effect. But I did send, I think there's about 52 people in there. And it includes both Atwater and Randolph. And then at the end of this, uh, you'll see there's some that have asterisks on them, like Chesapeake and uh, Home Depot and Lowe's and PepsiCo, etc. And I also had applied for to PNC Bank uh, for something that I have not heard back yet. So I don't know if they 
passed this offer last year and I'm going to have to reapply. Uh, and then on the last page is uh, something that uh, I want to talk about with them too. I, we've had, to my knowledge, only two people reply. Is that correct? And so for East Manufacturing uh, agreed to $3,000 and they're giving us a thousand a year. And um, I think Greg Jordan sent us a donation for the track code. Um, outside of that, I didn't get any letters back from them. I didn't get back saying, now go, go someplace. <laughs> uh, I didn't get any said, yeah, um, I didn't get any back said, maybe this is too much money. Maybe we can't afford it. Yeah. What I asked for from the businesses, I didn't think they all could do it. <coughs> but I, there are plenty of businesses that spend more than $1,000 a year just in advertisement. Um, that I thought could at least uh, give us a thousand in over three years. So I don't know. A part of the problem, I think, is they're waiting to hear certain things. Like I had a couple of people in the community ask me, if I make a donation, can I make it to one of the two? Can I make it to the football field or can I make it just to the track? And I didn't know exactly how to answer that question because that isn't what we were doing originally. Uh, and so I told them, you know, I'll, I'll get back to you and you know, just make a your donation so I can get back to you. Um, the other thing was, I feel, this is my own personal feeling, that the businesses aren't going to make any donation to this system until they hear from you whether or not you really are going to put something into this product. I'll be very honest about that. I mean, I, I might be that way too. But you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to throw $3,000 in. All this money is going to collect. And then we don't know for sure if, if we're going to get it built. And then, then what, what happens to the money? Do we keep it there? Do we send it back to them? That's kind of a... So I think we're at the point where we, we will still try to raise money on my end for what we're doing. But I do think we need to get some commitment and an end date. <coughs> if we can do that, if we can get some commitment from the board and an end date, or, or some thoughts on how to, maybe you can help finance some of this, maybe we can get a little bit more progress in going forward. You know, I'd like to be able to send a letter out and say, well, the Board of Education at a board meeting on such and such a date decided that yes, they want to go ahead with this project, and they're going to try to fund some of it. We all need to get the rest. We need to raise the rest in the community or through corporations. And uh, so that's kind of what I'm going to talk to you about. Uh, in the process of doing this, uh, Matt, Mr. Montgomery here, connected me with Alex Sarchon. And uh, I met with her a couple of times. Unfortunately, she was going to come and talk tonight, too. Unfortunately, she has a kid sick at home. She couldn't come. Uh, one of the things she gave me was this concept of the Brick for Us thing that she I gave you. I was selling bricks to individuals to put out. Um, you could sell them at any price. This gave an idea of what the price of the bricks cost and what, what you might want to sell them for and what kind of profit you would make if you, if you did that. Marlington did this in the process of redoing their stadium and track. That I do know. So that's something her and I are going to look into. Um, we also talked to her and I about the fact that there was only one bid on this whole thing. Um, we feel that there should be more bid staking. Uh, maybe the board, if they decide to go ahead with this, they need to open it up and get more bids and see what other companies, because I know, for example, uh, I know East Allison did spend $4 million. I think I can clarify that. What we did is when we did the building project, yeah. we said that, you know, it would be awfully nice to someday be able to, to do that. And I believe at the time, the architect, architectural vision group, was working on, I believe it was maybe Woodridge's facility. Mm -hmm. And what they did is they put, they used their, the history that they had with, with pricing and so on at the Woodridge facility just to come up with a budgetary type estimate. It wasn't really a, a quote or a hard dollar number. And then they and then they made a rendering of some different options of the way things could look 
one of the reasons that that, that um, they they move the, the stands in is because uh, at the time, like right now, if you think about it, the home field, we have our back to the school, and so one of the reasons they did we needed to walk, we needed bigger, we needed to widen it anyhow to get the the track, the eight lanes of the track, and then the football field couldn't be done on the same footprint we have now. So the idea was was to make the home field on the far side where we would be facing and looking at the school essentially. It's part of that. Well, it's part of that, you know, that's that architectural aesthetic thing that they that they go for the whole the whole field and the whole thing and all that. So we just, I, I don't know if you were, I, I talked to, to uh, Syed, the architect, yeah, twice yeah. this week. And once, and once I was with Steve, we had talked a little bit about this, but about, and he, he reminded me that that was the reason why we moved the visiting bleachers over there, or the home bleachers over there and that kind of thing. So, but I mean, so these are just more, I want to say budgetary numbers. So there was no, you know, nobody quoted anything, nobody came out and and said and, and did soil well, yeah, I'm looking at the situation. I, I don't have the authority to ask people to come here and bid. I don't have that. Well, we want nothing in, in, in my ability. I mean, I could ask them, they might tell me. I, it's not really my authority. Frank, we were down at the, the Capitol Conference and they had a bunch of these vendors down there. So, and I knew that you were doing this, so I wanted to pick up some information. We all walked around and talked to some of these guys. Um, First of all, everybody, the common thought was we don't want to do one without doing the other just because of the drainage and everything mm -hmm. else. And our drainage, is, it, it, it's not as bad as it was. Dave Miller fixed it up pretty good for us last year, but it's still pretty poor. So we would have to start from the bottom up and, and rebuild the base and everything else. And, and, and everybody, correct me if I'm wrong, they all said you don't want to do one without doing the other. Mm -hmm. um, all of them said basically that once you get the track in about the seventh year of the life of that track you need to start thinking about what you're going to do as far as resurfacing or any corrective the maintenance or whatever. in relation to that pardon me? in relation to that okay. okay um if we had you over the track there are probably at least three events just in track mm -hmm. that we could hold on the weekend and i be honest with you even going to ravenna we have not made less than a thousand dollars on me in fact we usually make a little bit more yeah. even even when we had i mean it was so cold that when you rained the whole meat and it was cold and we still made a thousand dollars that was at the gate when we made a thousand dollars so it's not that we can't make money and that money i say should be simply earmarked you know, into a fund for the resurfacing. Right. Usually about 10 years where you have to resurface. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. it's not yeah. going to get the kind of um, traffic that a lot of large school district tracks get. Right. Right. But it will get some. And plus, you know, if we have such a nice facility, we do want to make it available for the community to go up and be able to walk and right. do things on it. He said most of, or the, uh, the folks we, we talked to said it wasn't the use as much as it is the weather, the UVs, the different mm -hmm. stuff like that. So the one guy is going to send me some samples of what he would suggest because they use different types of tracks in different parts of the area. Mm -hmm. um, most of the guys that, that we talked to, as far as the football fields go, said that they get about eight years. Most of them, there was one guy that would uh, uh, warrant. You're talking about. The football field. You're not talking about natural, you're talking about synthetic field. Yes, right. And um, the one guy that, that Bob Thomas that we talked to you about, <coughs> Brian and I was talking to him yesterday, that he said that he could probably strike, what was it, 12 or 15 years? We could probably get ten out year, of it. 10 year guarantee. Yeah, 10 year guarantee, but he could, he, then we would probably see 15 years. So. I mean, I, I'm all for this. I, I, I can't speak for everybody. I would love to see it happen, but it's just a matter of, you know, where we're going to get the cash. Mr. Thomas is going to get a hold of Matt. He's, yeah. going, he's coming out to this area sometime within the next two weeks to do some measuring. And he said that he would come out, he would measure our field, <coughs> give us some kind of a budgetary number, maybe even a quick rendering yeah. of what it would look like and that kind of thing, you know, to get to kind of verify 
the numbers that we have here um, to see what kind of what kind of dollar we're talking. I, I, everybody was right around for both. I said just yank a number, and they said like eight hundred to a million for both. That doesn't include the field house and all that other stuff. That they're talking about. That, uh, I'm talking about a track. turf, a turf football field, okay. and and all weather track. They said right, right around the middle. They're saying the synthetic turf and the track. Yeah, it's about eight hundred thousand. Anywhere from eight hundred to a mil for the both. Let's see, I have some questions because <coughs> that's about right. I was, I was uh, shocked, maybe just, you know, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm not a turf guy, that, you know, your, your football field, your turf is only going to last roughly, you know, somewhere between 15, maybe that's 20 That's about years. right. Yeah. You know, that under place there is there's just and, 10 years. And I'm thinking, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, you know, just economically, would you be better off to do natural? And one thing we don't do, we haven't done, we haven't had the funds obviously, but, but we don't do a lot of the things that, that for proper maintenance that probably should have been done on our grass field. So as a result of that, our football field isn't in the, in the condition we would like it to be in. And that's nobody's fault. I mean, that's, I guess we could say it's, you know, it's dollars and cents. But, but my thing is with that, if you, if you spent a little more money and you know, get it done right and you spend a little more money maintaining it, it's going to be a lot less than six, the seven. Fields, the fields get a lot more use now than they did twenty years ago. Well, then that was the reason. You have you're playing at home boys and girls soccer on those fields. You're playing JV football and then varsity football. And you got the youth kids. And you kids. And, and like when you have uh, one of the guys reminded me that a, a, a all weather field that in the spring you can go up there and, and if you got good drainage like we would have with a with a turf. Field that you could get the snow off and, and baseball and softball could practice on there. You know, the track the people would be working on the outside mm -hmm. and the baseball people would be able to get out and do baseball things. So um, there are a lot of advantages. And then, you know, maybe some other club sports would come up. One of the things that I noticed in the design that he gave back to us, and I just noticed it, I said he didn't, he did not, he drew in, I think, the high jump there. And he didn't do anything about the long jump area or the shot of this. But we have we have two of each up there, and we have we have uh, another. We have two discus areas too. We have one on the track, which actually what it's just say it's really starting to, to say we don't like that idea. But we do have one. We put another pad up down below, so we might have to move like shop book down there or something, uh, and then take the long jump. And put it on a, on an end zone, which is they do it. They do that in a lot of new designs. They, they put the high jump in one end zone and the long jump in the other, and then they leave the sides empty because the soccer field is a little bigger than the uh, football field. Well, I just wanted to give you some idea of where we're at. Um, I was going to send another uh, round of letters out, but I didn't do that because. I, I kind of want to find out what the commitment is. I kind of find out what her and I are going to do with this. Maybe ask them if they're interested in doing this kind of thing. What I might just do is send a letter out to these local businessmen and ask if they could meet with me on a certain date in a group, maybe here. Then we could talk over, you know, what degree do they feel they should commit to this thing. This Bob Thomas said he had a bunch of ideas for fundraising and stuff as well. As a, as a district, and, and I'm speaking individually, I'm not speaking on behalf of the board. <coughs> this is kind of, we haven't talked at length about this, but individually, for and my, myself, you know, I have, I have, wow, I would love to see a beautiful complex up there, and if I, you know, that, that would be fabulous from, from a district. You know, we, we still haven't been able to, to um, put back and, and restore the, the cuts we had to make back in the last three years when we were trying to pass the levy. So can I, can I ask a question? Sure. Do we presently have a bond fund that's running? You know, capital and improvement fund and bond improvement fund? No. Permanent improvement fund? Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, we don't no. have a permanent fund. Once we, we, have, we, we had one up the year this, we moved into the school and everybody said, 
that is holding when, the program when, for considering that work. Well, also, as part of the, the money to for the building issue for these buildings, <coughs> included a half mil, right, half mil of maintenance, of maintenance, for maintenance. and uh, so at that time, we were, we were at the point where we thought it would be the best thing for the community not to try to get the permanent improvement levy renewed because we had the additional half mil with this that people were already paying for and they paid for it and plus they were paying for the new buildings and the new facilities and all that. So we were So let me ask a question. But we do have a, we do have funds aside for per, set aside for permanent improvement. That is just a for a staggering amount of funds. It's not getting plunged. So, yeah. And and that, and we're what does it we're gonna bring in? About hundred and fifty nine thousand dollars. One million a year. So if we put up a, okay. can I ask? Are you sure? Okay. My, I, I trust you more than I trust myself. In my mind, I was thinking like fifty nine. No, it's one hundred fifty nine. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I know it's less than no. it's not, okay. uh, I've never I should know I should know by now. Not the question. Not the My thing is if, if we if we publicize it's gonna be done. And say that we're gonna put up a bond issue to do that particular thing and do it well for the community. And we extend extend it over a five, six years, and let's say five year period and raise five hundred thousand that way. Leave the other hundred and fifty nine the other fifty nine thousand for other things. You know? Or tie can you tie the bond let me ask you this question. Can you tie the bond issue in with uh, other things such as computers or technology? Well, I have to check on that. Over the years they've done so many new things. They're combining different types of levies for yeah. different uh, different numbers of years and that sort of so we would have to uh, revisit that. So it wouldn't be just the athletic but maybe race. we could use it as part of you know, stuff with the schools. You know, one of the things that, that yeah, here's the thing to me. The thing is we can dis we can discuss forever and nothing will get done. Because that's what's happened in the last ten years. I mean fifteen years ago East Manufacturing gave me $10,000 for the all-weather track. I could never get any of the superintendents to say, hey, let's go do this. I, I, just, I just couldn't get them to just ignore me. And I ended up using up the $10,000 so that at least we had a track that was half worthy to run uh, over the time period. The decision, to me, what has to be done is the decision has to be made, and then the decision has to be made on how we're going to get the money to do it. We will try to raise money on our side. My, my original thought, the amounts that I put on here, was to try and raise about $150,000 from the local businesses, try to raise $100,000 from alumni, and then go for uh, larger groups. And uh, you know, so we would raise about a quarter of a million between local businessmen and, and alumni. That was my thought. <coughs> And that's still my thought. I think we can do that. You know, maybe using this brick concept or whatever, but I think we can do that. If we go at it for three or four years really strong. Well, I guess in my mind, if, if you're thinking about if we try to put up some kind of a bond issue on, yeah. would it make more sense to if we were if we were thinking about something like that to try to do the project? Well, that's up to you. You know, <laughs> I mean for a two mil bond. Two mil bond. The whole project, the new stands and everything. I think we call it. I mean, yeah, we yeah, it like that. That's how many years it should have. Yeah. Well, yeah, because because if we go more than five, it's no longer going to work. It'd have to be again. Yeah. So you have an idea. Yeah. I mean, I would be willing to support that and work for it and, and, and all those things. If, you know, I, I just, in my heart, I personally cannot. Justify taking our funds, you know, from our existing operator. You know, you know. I understand. But I would more. I personally would be more into that. I would help support that work. Work to do that. If that's. I mean, that's I mean, so. 
Anybody? Well, you might be John. There's a lot of things you have to be I, I, Yeah, I, I think some, you know, it's definitely something we're going to have to take under advisement and see and how, and how and we set in this. All the time, so. I mean, you can't do your job until we do ours. That's so, yeah, okay. you know, mm -hmm. as far as contact with uh, individuals or companies or, or potential sponsors, I think uh, we need to probably sit as a group uh, with the board and give you something uh, that, that would reflect our commitment to it uh, as to whether we can pursue it or whether we can't pursue it. But I don't want to have you out on the limb like you have been for 10 years uh, soliciting um, from different individuals and nothing uh, appreciable coming to what, what you know, your original intent was. So it, we okay, will take one thing I did in soliciting is I made it so that everything went Nothing, I don't, I don't ever and I don't ever now want to touch money that has anything to do with that. Which well, is a good idea. You know, uh, <laughs> so, but I mean, I mean, I was an athletic director for 10 years and I made sure everything was to the penny and correct. I never had any problems with the state doing my stuff ever. And it's the same thing with this. I didn't want to touch the money coming in. So I made sure that everything went to the treasurer. And that would still be how we do it, no matter what. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess we need to discuss the pros and cons of of the bond you know, issue kind of thing. Right. Do you have a copy of that thing? Let me get it. You need one. Alex. Yeah. Alex. Could uh. That was just an estimate. It's not a true thing. Could you guys look into for next meeting, give us an update or even email, you know, the weekly update, the options of what's out there, what 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 are the table kind of on from that kind of because what we have to discuss, the things we have to think about is you know, in two thousand and seventeen we, we just passed a five a five year levy last year, this year I guess. In two thousand seventeen, that's gonna have to be there has to be something like that before that. For that, yeah. So I mean, you know, we have to, to think about all those things. You know, we don't want to. We don't want to pass a, a bond issue for the field and not be able to pass an operating uh, issue for this to keep it to keep school. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a it's a it's complex. So so Matt and I can certainly look look at what you're requesting. In the meantime, if maybe we can get some feedback. So that Matt and I kind of know what type of scope you're looking at. If we're just looking at the, the football field and the other track, or if we're going to go with some type of uh, bond issue request, you know, do we want to try to, you know, do it all on a fell group and be done with it and have a nice uh, facility up there for the students and community. So that kind of us know that kind of gives us some, some direction. Well, from a standpoint of like our bleachers, um, I know probably about 20 years ago, more than that. the bleachers were the, the framing was kept but new new aluminum extrusions were put onto the seats and the feet you know we did that on that was a saturday morning project up there mid saturday mornings holding those things down but i don't know if they would probably i don't know as far as meeting current requirements and may or may not be was that jared the law school no no didn't yeah. Yeah. Oh. But do we do we do do we still have um, yearly evaluations through the uh, Portage Health Department? So they look at our facilities as far as our insurance carrier. Yeah, inspects the bleachers. Uh, it gives us recommendation, but so far, but I don't know. We've been deemed as being okay. Yeah. okay, but the county doesn't come out. No, not our own. Not like when Jared's law was in February, they would come out. Of the every year, and they would have certain things that they would require. <laughs> as long as we've been inspecting the current, I mean, that's and our press boxes. I think you had mentioned to me that our press box has some issues. How can we get up there and use them? It's something that required some attention this season. Okay. Do we have a lot to talk about? Well, and also Todd, I was just asking Todd if we wanted to put something on the ballot in May, we'd have to 
do something. You know, that we have resol two resolutions before February 8th. I'm not so, exactly sure of the case. So it's May and early part of February. Okay. May have be more like November. Because I don't think, I mean, that would mean we'd have to do something next month. That'd be the first, January would be the second. And we certainly yeah, want to have we nice certainly want to have a, a, a new rendering so right. so people can see what what's being proposed. Right. And maybe some other quotes, maybe some yeah. And I think that's one good thing is the, the quote, you know, having pro pro grass or something else. Pro, yeah, grass. pro grass coming out and giving us a rendering and quote, at least on the field and the track part, that's you know, we can verify these numbers, but the numbers are still <coughs> And we were discussing with the various people just to have a quick discussion. They don't seem to be out of line, at least for the track and the, and the field park. So. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Anything else for any subject before we move on to the next one? I spoke with somebody yesterday about it, before, and what it was one of these companies <coughs> that he sure was on. And he is going to go ahead and contact Mr. Rossi. Uh, from where? I don't remember the names. It's one of. I we picked these up for you. Um, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll get them before I'm out there. One of these companies yesterday. So he has your number. He'll be contacting you. Mm -hmm. I think we also spoke with the vendor about the bricks also. Uh, yeah. So we, you know, there's there's a lot of opportunity to look at different vendors and companies for the brick work. Uh, I know over here at uh, the courthouse, Portage County Courthouse, they've done the same thing with the inlays for the uh, veterans. So that's, I'm sure we could be competitive with trying to get the best, um, the best deal possible with, you know, a number of vendors. So we can probably get that out also. So. <coughs> Okay, any other visitors who would like to address the board before we do oh. uh, Keith Angel, um, I'd like to address the board, but it's more like an executive decision. I don't want this to be a uh, you know, public forum where I need to discuss with the board. Is that possible? Um, have you met with Mr. This is in reference to... I'll cover 11th meeting with you. I, I it all depends on you. I mean, we didn't. Was you guys? This is the first time that I didn't know that you. I didn't. This is the first time I, that you wanted to approach the board. Right. You had reached out to me beforehand, right? No. In the same way. Okay, so I'm not sure. Um, that's your decision. So what you want to move forward? Can we have it? And should we well, schedule an executive session? Should you well, just present it? Well, I think what we want to do is 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 have Keith meet with with you, or and if it involves a building principal, building situation, the person in charge of that building and you, first to give you guys the opportunity so to you go want, through and Is it in reference to what happened on October 11th, the meeting you had with me, where you want to talk to them and to what I said, or where are you looking to go? With I'm looking meeting? to go where, basically, the meeting I had with you kind of discussed that. Okay. And then where we want the, um, I want the board to know exactly what, you know, what happened, the facts. Okay. They weren't informed already. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. So it's more of an appeal of what you said. And so so you're, you're, you're taking it. So you want them to be aware of what our conversation was Correct. and their thoughts on that. Correct. So I don't know if another meeting with me would be. Yeah. I don't think it'd be better to have another meeting with you at all. I mean, you know the facts of what we talked about before. I would feel better if I could let, that we had a conversation. But uh, I would support whatever you guys decide. Was this a yeah. personal yeah. nature or something that involves <coughs> you and a student or a student? Not for me, yeah. just a student. I, I think it would probably be more prudent to not have it in this forum. Uh, Can we do a call in executive result? session for apparent concern well we have to is there what are the parameters of that certainly amending the to add an executive session if we choose to do so well i think maybe it would be better if um yeah, 
let's just kind of leave this. This is. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah I mean, normally, what you do is you call and, and you have it put on the agenda. Right. So I think that's the problem. Well, I guess maybe you just want to discuss it for what what happened. Yeah, make you know, make you know, okay. break the lights open. It's going to be a quick five minutes. Right? Would it make more sense just to have Mr. Montgomery and myself meet with you, and then I will take the information to the board? That'd be fine. Okay. We'll do that. Can we can we set that up for sometime here in the next couple of days? Yeah, I'm available tomorrow on Friday. Okay. Would that be more for you? Um, so with my timing, is it would be in the evening. I mean, I work yeah, with five o'clock. So, or how about Tuesday? No, I'm not going to do that. Let's let's do something. Right? We need to talk and kind of come up with a, a timing. Get a time frame here between yourselves when you're okay. available in the evening, and we'll do be available after five though. More like after five thirty. It'll only be like you know, they got ten minutes. Tell us about. Can we do tomorrow five thirty? <coughs> yeah, I can do tomorrow. Could you do tomorrow at 5 30? Yeah, I believe so. There's a risk of being really on the phone. That's why I'm seeing this. This is what happens when you get over the camera the next day. Um, that is the biggest change. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> yeah, I could tomorrow at 5 30. <coughs> Is that work for you? Yeah, it should work for you. Well, if there's any, any discrepancies, I'll give one of your call. Okay. Um, we'll just meet in, in, in uh, Matt's office, yes, in the administration building. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. 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 Okay, anybody else who would like to address the board at this point? Okay, then that will call for the regular meeting of our local board of education. On this Wednesday, November 13th, 2013. Roll call, please, Bob. John? Here. Wilson? Here. Chris Here. Here. Fletcher? Here. Jones? Here. <clears throat> okay, <coughs> item four is the president's report. A couple things. Um, it's evaluation season, so if you have, don't have your evaluations with you today, if you could email them to me, I will compile them. And my goal would be to meet with these guys before next board meeting. Perfect world, so we can do that. If you can do that, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, Thanks, Karen. Uh, wanted to thank Gail Pavlika for, for uh, the interest and the uh, uh, caring and running for the Board of Education. We appreciate that, uh, and uh, thank you for for uh, wanting to be involved in those things. Uh, really do. It is nice to get you know, more people. You get out there, and more people, you get more ideas, and you get you know. And I think that competition. And helps people helps keep it renewed and refreshed. So thank you very much for for that. I want to congratulate Diane for uh, for uh, being successful, coming back for another four years. Thank you very much. Um, and then one more thing, and I know Matt's kind of heard most of this, but sorry, you didn't hear it again. Uh, we were uh, and you've heard us a lot talk about when we were at Capital Conference this week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Uh, down in Columbus, it's the Ohio School Board's Convention. A lot of good information. There's probably, I would guess, over 100 different breakout sessions that you can attend that pertain to school issues. Um, one of the ones that I went to was uh, by, about a school out in Western Ohio that is, is similar, a little larger than us, but similar in makeup, uh, about 4,000 students. 45% of those students are economically disadvantaged. However, they've been able to uh, be either excellent with distinction or excellent on the state report card in the last five years. And this was talked about how they, how and why they did it, or how they, what their procedures were, and how they got there, and how they, how they planned to stay there. And uh, it was a very uh, interesting, very informative, the best meeting I've ever been to out there, I thought. But it was also <clears throat> nice to see that we are doing so many of the same things they are doing. I mean. Everything they came up as far as their evaluation uh, uh, instruments and tools and the different testing, uh, STAR, CRADLE, all these other different tests that we use for to uh, identify and assess the students who are doing. Uh, so that was very encouraging. I also think uh, that maybe I, I, I saw some areas where, where we're, you know, we're real close. We just need to do some adjustments here and how we we interpret the data and our response to the intervention and, and, and the 
monitoring of the intervention, and those kind of things. So I think that we're, we're, I think that we can hopefully take some of that and I got contact information from those the administrators that were there and that I'm thinking Matt and I are going to be contacting them and talking to them here sometime in the near future just to see how they do things. But they have, they have grade level teams just like us. They have building level teams just like us. They have district level teams just like us. They have, they're following the Ohio continuous improvement model with the four stages and very much, the, I mean, it's, it, it's really uh, ironic or it's really encouraging to see that they're, that we are so close. It's just they're getting better results than we are. I think it's safe to say that and that's not meant at a, as a slap at anybody, but I think they're getting a little better results. And I think it's just, there's just some real fine points in there that I think that we can do, that we can we can uh, implement and really hopefully see that, see some, see the growth that we know we're all working so hard on the staff and the administration and everybody's working so hard for. So that was very exciting for me. That was, uh, and I, every time I ran into Matt, I think I talked to him about it. So he's probably, he's probably tired. If he ever to Springfield again, that might be okay. But, uh, but it's kind of, it was very good. Excellent. I was, I think so. I was very, very happy to be there and go through that. So, uh, that okay. is not all that I have tonight. I got one other thing that's kind of neat. We started about a year ago doing our commendations during the President's report. And we used to just send out a, a little a little um, certificate that we signed. And, that, and we started inviting uh, the people receiving commendations to the board meetings so we could recognize them for all their hard work and effort. And uh, tonight we have just one, just one, but it is no minor feat. Um, we have a gentleman, young gentleman that has received the award, uh, the honor of Evil Scout. Uh, and as part of his legal project, he built two sets of bleachers for a, a local soccer field. And uh, I guess I never realized how valuable the Eagle Scout award was until I worked with some engineers that are like 40, 50 years old that were Eagle Scouts, and they still talk about it. And they and they are like, I mean, it's like a the red badge of courage or whatever. I mean, it's something that if you've been there and achieved it, it's really very, very highly respected. It is like a brotherhood. And, and it is, it is quite an accomplishment. So this time, if I'd like to, to congratulate Steve, I believe him, for his. Flip to the last page, and you will see that uh, 
open enrolled in is up by 13 students. So we have more students coming in than the previous year. Uh, and we have less students going out, although only two less. And we have a net difference of negative 20. So we're still in the negative, but the year before, we were negative 35. So I think we're making steps in the right direction. If you go under community charter enrollment, the online option, those 31 students uh, for 2013-2014, those are the students that I think that I will be reaching out to to see if we can entice them to go from the private online school to maybe enticing them to join our private school. That would be, a, 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 I guess, a, an area of uh, improvement for, for myself. Uh, also, you'll notice that our biomed student numbers went up. So last year, there were nine students at biomed. This year, there's 17. But this year, there's two years. I think, I think we're in the second year of biomed, so we have freshmen and sophomores there. So I would expect that that number would continue to increase as the school grows, because each year that we're going to have progressive, and um, progressive year until you have all four. Uh, other than that, uh, homeschool numbers are down uh, from 62 to 56, and we are carefully monitoring these fluctuations. And this is the first uh, official analysis of the year. Do you have any questions about this? Yeah. One of the things I've been told is that we have a lot of students moving in and out of the district all the time. It, there's, there's definitely a, a transient, uh, a small transient population um, that are fluctuating. And um, we're constantly getting updates on who's coming and who's going. And I don't know if that's, uh, I feel like it's more than last year, but I don't know if that's because of the position I'm in where I'm hearing about all three buildings as opposed to just two. Uh, I'm trying to um, I guess delve into that and see what it is. Any other questions about enrollment numbers? Uh, surprise things that, that I just thought would be fun to talk about. Because uh, I know you like surprises. Uh, the first thing that I'm excited about is uh, Mrs. Sandell has been working, I put it in the update, that she was working on, you know, we're working on college awareness and college preparation. Uh, that's one of the focuses of the district. We're trying to work on the whole student kind of mentality, preparing the kids for college, and um, their future is very important to us on many levels. Uh, one of the small things that we're doing, Mrs. Sandell saw this in another school she was at, she graciously spearheaded it, was to um, try to increase college awareness by sharing where each teacher went to college. And she made signs that hang above each student or each teacher's door of where they went to college. Um, she made mine. She didn't hang it when she hung everyone else's. Um, I won't hold that against her. Um, she claimed it was just so I could show up for the meeting. What? Um, here's what mine says. I am a golden flash. What will you be? So each, out of each classroom, the first thing the kids will see walking in will be the sign. We're trying to propagate that um, I guess future, the importance of future education. <coughs> uh, it's, it's something small, it's something insignificant, but it's something that I think tries to change the culture of the school. And I'm very um, gracious uh, that Mrs. Sandell was willing to spearhead this. And um, once Ms. Early laminated the elementary, um, uh, it took uh, Mrs. Sandell a little more time than because she decided to mirror that. So uh, thank you for everyone's efforts. I'm excited about this. And I will hang mine up tonight by myself. I'll um, come over and hang it up. No, it's OK. It's OK. I want your help. <laughs> thank you. Uh, another thing that I have, this is just to, to counter, I, Brian told you that he was talking to me about the, the Springfield, and he wasn't lying, he was talking about it, talking about it. So my account of that, although I think student data is important, don't get me wrong. I went to a keynote speaker who said the criteria of a good school is whether or not you can get your kid out of your basement. Literally, can you get your college graduate out of the basement? He said that we should be focusing on creativity and enriching creativity. Apple's model or motto is that if you need to be managed, you are non-employable. And the keynote focused on the idea of entrepreneurship, which is a hard word to say. I practice it in front of the mirror. And he listed these skills that we should be harvesting in kids. And, and I want you to just think, 
uh, the message tonight will be educating the student, the whole student, in uh, many facets. Uh, but one of um, the list of criteria to enrich entrepreneurship is the following. We should be enriching confidence, social capital, which I thought was a nice way to say you have friends. You can work with others. You can play nice with others. Confidence, social capital, risk taking, passion, creativity, alertness to opportunity, global competency, uniqueness, and empathy. And he was a um, he was born in China, and he talked a lot about how we compare American education to China education. And he said, interestingly enough. Even though China is rated higher, and this was, this was a, a gentleman that was born in China, rated higher than the United States, the unemployment rate is the same. He said 50% on average worldwide is our unemployment rate. And he said to counter that, he believes that we need to have creative students who cannot become, we don't want to educate them to be employees, for a certain job, we want them to be creative enough to create a new job that we can't even think of right now. So 20 years down the road, we're not gonna know what the current job is going to be. He also said, in regards to testing, because China tests more than anyone else, he said that China is currently reworking their education system because they're finding that although they're all good, not they're all, Many of their students are excelling in science and math. They all hate science and math, and therefore are not choosing those career paths. So while I think, and this, is, this will be our argument back and forth, while I think that student data is very important, we have to make sure that we're balancing that to make sure that we're still pushing the kids to be the most they can be for the future, and they get out of their parents' basements. And that's not an easy feat. And when I left the keynote, I was I left with more questions than answers. My reply is very simple. <laughs> if they don't pass the achievement test, they are never going to get out of this. Unless we change governments. What? Unless we change governments. Yes. 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 Uh, that will be our, our debate, and I think it's just um, I'm pretty it'll be a rich driven, conversation. I'm pretty highly <laughs> driven on the achievement test results, mainly because that's the way we are judged. I'm not saying that I'm not. As a person, I'm just saying that we should make sure we're thinking. I remember. I, I, we can't just funnel and say. Does that mean you agree? I'm not going to admit it. But, <laughs> but no, I just remember the, the, the feeling of the first time we were excellent and excellent in distinction. I would say that outside of of, person, of family things and being proud of my kids and my, my spouse for things that they accomplished, I think that was probably the proudest happiest, one of the happiest and most proud moments of my life. And I think that that's just, that's kind of what we're all here for. And we need to really, really, really focus on what we need to do to pass those tests. There's a lot of other minutia that goes on that, that you know, takes sometimes takes away from that. We just need to, my opinion is that we need to, to do the deal because the better we do on that, the better, the, the more, the more students will, will come back that are, are maybe not are, are online or homeschooled or whatever. So I just, you know. but I do appreciate the fact that, that you're right. I had Jerry Davis as a, uh, was my high school math teacher. And he was very big on, he went to Mount Union College and he was big on the fact that Mount Union taught people to think and gave them a well-rounded education and all that stuff. And then once you have that well-rounded education, you know to think and be creative and, and you know things like you're talking about, you'll be able to make a living. But, but you got to have the skill set, and, uh, and and that's that's very true. Unfortunately, we're saddled with with this, you know, all the things the state keeps pushing down our throat. Whether it be the third re grade reading guarantee, the OTEs, the the, uh, the student learning object objectives, and all that stuff, which I still hard to tell exactly how. Some of those things value the educational process in our students. I mean, it takes a lot of our teachers' time, a lot of our staff time, a lot of our administrators' time, but unfortunately, it just, I, I'm not sure that it's all of the benefits of students. And that's not our fault. I mean, that's, that's being pushed down. That's all right. <coughs> Mr. Carpenter. <coughs> 
Superintendent. So we need to add the consent agenda. Item B, on the superintendent's <coughs> business. <coughs> and then two under the treasurer's uh, business. One is to add item F, as you see on the other agenda. And also, on the treasurer's business, item C, for a list of fund. First one there, 451. The fiscal year 2013 carryover allocation should be referenced as zero. considering the uh, requirements that would be um, you know, placed upon the schools and the district uh, with, as far as health care and training uh, to our teachers as well as uh, coaches. And, and uh, right now the uh, school boards association uh, are, are being very cautious about uh, their their approval of this, um, not that they, you know, they of course are going to lobby one way or the other, but the provisions have been thought to be vague and overreaching. Obviously, it is another, um, it is another opportunity for a bill to to place uh, probably unfunded mandates on the district. Uh, it is a critical thing, especially if you have children uh, that are diabetic uh, <coughs> and the schools do have to, you know, work with you um, to, uh, to make sure that the kids are safe and, and that we are aware of these situations. But having another mandate uh, to the extent that uh, the bill currently is in would be pretty taxing on the district. Uh, also, Senate. Um, Senate Bill 220 uh, seeks to remove prohibitions on charging student fees for participating in dual enrollment programs. That's one to keep an eye on. I think that's a very exciting part of, of uh, you know, the progression of, of high schools and where we're going. Um, so, you know, I'm really anxious to see where they come up with this. Uh, Senate Bill 122 uh, establishes a regional services and accountability. Basically, there, this is a, another layer of state oversight. Uh, they're going to conduct reviews of structure and performance of educational regional service systems. It encourages uh, collaboration of services. I think, you know, why establish 
a, a oversight committee from the state level when we as a district are already doing that. You know, we no one's giving us more money. We're having to work more with less. And, uh, you know, a, um, a good district board will, will obviously always entertain opportunities uh, to do a more efficient job. Uh, the House is seeking to revise the high school diploma requirements under House Bill 193. Um, so that's, that's something that uh, we should keep a close eye on. And one thing that um, also caught my attention was House Bill 8, 8, House Bill 8, which is to enhance safety protocols and work with local law enforcement and set requirements for personnel des designated to carry concealed weapons. Uh, the focus would be on local control and what best represents the needs of the district uh, or desires of the local school community. Uh, kind of pairing along with that is House Bill 215, which authorizes the Board of Education to enter into an agreement with a current or retired law enforcement officer to volunteer in a school in exchange for tax credits for service. You know, we don't have a um, a um, school resource officer. School resource officer. Uh, it is an idea that, that we have bannered around a little bit, and and there's always a um, there's always a certain amount of concern for the safety of our kids. We always go above, uh, you know, and beyond to to make ourselves aware of you know uh, our procedures our access to students. Uh, this would be another layer uh, of security for that. Um, I'm not saying, you know, it's something that we will or will not do, but with these kind of programs or house bills that would help us uh, provide that, I, I, I am definitely for, um, for that opportunity. And, uh, but having a paid person is always difficult on our school finances as well. Being able to uh, enter into agreement with current or retired law enforcement officers uh, to where they, you know, it's kind of a give and take if they get tax uh, and deferments or credits for, for their service would be a big plus to not only our school districts but those all over the state. Um, you know, we, we very much appreciate our law enforcement and the the expertise that they bring to us in dedication and working with our school administrators uh, to to give us the, the best that they can so that we're always safe um, and then you know they see so much they give they, they have kind of like a pulse on the community making us aware of concerns out in the community uh, trends things of that nature so um, we can't say enough and, and show our appreciation enough to our local law enforcement officers and uh, the job that they do. But, you know, the, the, uh, from the legislative standpoint, things are, are getting hot and heavy down there, and I'm sure we'll see more things start to come out of it. Uh, so far this year, I think we've got 70 some odd bills pending. Uh, we've got five that have been passed. So hopefully in the near future we'll see more activity. Okay. Great. Any other than anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Um, brings us to item 10, or I'm sorry, item 9 is other business. Is there anything else anything the board would like to? I just got a couple of thoughts. Um, we brought up that virtual memory. Or, uh, I know when Amy, Andrew, was here. And we had talked about letting our kids use that virtual, using virtual the, the virtual academy, the Viking Virtual Academy, to, if, if we didn't have like AP classes, but they wanted to take, there's like 150 we or are something, to do we're, we're letting them do that, that then, right? There is an expense to <clears throat> so there are course fees that are associated with that, but they're taking courses that um, are above and beyond. So, so there is, there are kids that are utilizing it, and it's, uh, it's not as much as I would like, but there are those fees associated with it, and that may be stifling a little bit. All right. 
Well, I'd like to talk about that and promote that a little bit more if we could. Um, this college and, and like a career day, I'm on my third senior here. I don't know, I don't recollect anything. Have you ever done anything like that? Like get a bunch of colleges to come in? Um, I, we talked a little bit about it, but I want to bring it up here because not everybody was around when you and I were discussing this. But you know, bring some in to talk about financial aid, filling out that stupid FAFSA. Anybody that's done that, it's just you know. Well, we after our conversation about that, I reached out to Michael and Lori and sent them an email to say that we're going to start conversations about that. I think that the importance of that is, is huge. And I know that everybody has to fill out the past, but uh, so it is, that, that's a small portion of it. The bigger right. would be trying to, <coughs> I think that as evidence of the, the small things we're doing with the college signs, um, this would be another layer that, that's more tangible. So I'm completely supportive that we have that conversation. Yeah, as much as you spend time in college. Yeah, I know. So, so I mean, I, I I didn't go to college, but I'm making sure that, that my kids do that. And and I know that, that I've talked to a lot of parents. And I mean, that's a, God almighty, that is the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life with, the, with all the student funding changing and this and that. And, I'll be working till I'm like 193 just to pay for all this stuff. We'll have a great day. A couple more years. <laughs> yeah, a couple more years anyway. But I mean, I just think, I, I've never seen this, or I, I don't, maybe we have and I missed it, I don't know. But I would like to see it, you know, I'm not even sure. Some of the small scale, but I think we could do a better job of organizing and promoting. Yeah. yeah. There's it's a real open. opportunity there because, I mean, we're sitting in the middle of so many educational you know, institutions, Kent State, Akron U, Malone, uh, Youngstown State, and all of these colleges uh, and universities uh, have people available or prepared to talk about this at great lengths. More times than not, you have to tell them <coughs> stuff, that's too much. But I think uh, having, taking away that apprehension uh, from, from a lot of that process would be a, a huge benefit to not only the students, but also the parents and the families. And, um, you know, it, 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 can be a, it can be an overwhelming experience. And I've been through it once, and I'm kind of getting into it uh, already as, as having a daughter that's a junior. But, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like a one-shot deal, and you don't want to mess it up. So you want to give your kids the best opportunity that's available. And, and there's a lot of opportunity that, that we can take advantage of as a board and as a community to draw those people uh, in. So as much as um, I would love to have community feedback on, on, on opportunities to, to address things that families uh, or students that are looking, looking at. So I know a lot of the kids get went to that ATI Mm -hmm. and, um, I, it, and it was amazing to me when I was listening to, I always like to hear, because I know these kids, but I don't talk to them sometimes as much as I should about what their future is. And when I'm standing there at the football games or the soccer games or whatever on senior nights and they're announcing what they would like to do. And there was a lot of the kids that got in, that want to get involved in wildlife management and stuff like that. And, you know, I've been doing a hunting and fishing radio and TV show since 1980. And so I know a lot of these people. What shameless plugs, I know. Just go ahead. Thumbs up, buddy. But um, <clears throat> there's a lot of people, uh, a lot of kids that don't know how to get into that end of that. And like hockey, I'd like to see maybe a hockey up here because they're the only ones. And then they have a two year agreement because they only do associate. So it, I think is it Rio Grande or Rio Grande? Rio Grande. If you're in Texas, it's Rio Grande. But they also have they also have it with, uh, with uh, Ohio with w, State, yeah. with WVU, with Idaho. Yeah. Obviously, my child's going to be going there. So. Yeah. Like, well, Jess, that was pretty impressive. Just to start off. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I think that the moral story is that we need to continue to read more and increase our outreach to the community and to the parents to help support them in this trying process. You know, there's, there's, college is not for everyone. That's what I always thought. You know, some people, they, they are hands-on kind of people. They don't want to get in there and, and do the, the books, the studying, the test, the test, and test. Uh, they're hands-on, they're, they're kind of visual driven, and um, to me it's easier for me to do something and learn it. You could explain it all day, but until I do it, you know, it's not going to help me. Uh, when I was over at API um, not too long ago, because it's close to where I work, um, they have tremendous programs over there. I mean, from a rural community where you're, you're talking about people who are very, you know, grew up around tractors and, and large machinery. Uh, they have a whole program over there for that. And and the ability to... to How uh, you read that? Well, <laughs> hopefully a very high price for the yes. You know, by the time they, they, they uh, graduate from there in heavy equipment, uh, you know, it gives you so many more opportunities over just trying to break into a private contractor and learn the ropes the hard way. You know, there's there's a lot of opportunity that I've worked for uh, colleges and universities <coughs> for decades, and I didn't know there was that kind of programming available uh, that that would be of interest to people that uh, maybe aren't the conventional uh, accountants and and architects and engineers and things of that nature, but you know, just uh, the people that, that like this kind of environment, they, they like a rural setting, they, they've been doing this for years, teaches them how to do it better, smarter, more efficiently, and uh, gives them a lot more opportunities. So I think, you know, as a board, if we can reach out to some of these places uh, that's gonna bring in uh, those, those post-secondary opportunities, as well as those uh, those opportunities for people who are uh, looking for unconventional college type programming, uh, that's a great that's a great thing, and and I would really like to see this see this through. Where do you go to find out? And that's just, I'm asking because I don't know, um, like projections for occupations for the future. We run the students through some of those projections. They have a, um, I don't know if it's in a class or not, but somebody, I don't know, I think it's the Titan Mayfield, where they run scenarios and throw a guidance from. I don't know what the website is, but they do do. Um, well, I mean, you know, if, if you got a kid that wants to get a, like a master's in Renaissance art, what are you going to do with that? You know, I know that that would probably be a really neat thing to do, but. There's actually a website. Are the jobs going to be? I've come across it a couple of times. Yeah. I'm not sure what it is, but there is a website that says like what job you can get with this degree, and what if you take, you know, what degree do you need to take if you want to do this job. Kind of I'm sorry if I'm asking dumb questions. I just don't. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But I also think that we need to, if we're going to do a college type fair, I think our timing should be more. Um, like April of their junior year to get them thinking about it. I, I think we're a little behind the eight ball. I, I've said this the last couple of years. I think that um, the sooner you can get to these colleges, the more chance, especially with our children at the water little lot who need assistance or are looking for grants or, or that sort of thing. If you can do that in the fall, I know Cliff meets with everybody in January because that's when you can fill out the FAFSA. Yeah. But I really think that should be something that hits them. If it's a college fair, they're end of their junior year, and then it hits them September, October, while they're thinking, you know, because that's whenever they're visiting, that's when they should be visiting, that's when they should be, if they play a sport, they should be contacting that school, having them come out and look at them. I mean, there's just so much that should be happening between September and December, and I think we're missing a gap. Yeah, a lot of those grants are like the, the deadlines in June. Yeah. yeah. I, I, that's I something we will right. I know you have a lot on your plan. Yeah, I know, that's, that's a high target. On the side note, I went to my beekeeping conventions always there for that. <laughs> Just seeing. <so> you know. <laughs> You're a beekeeper? <laughs> <laughs> I am. On that same, oh, on that same line, um, no, uh, no, uh, um, 
there's there isn't. Uh, I got in the mail the other day, and Steve probably got one too. Discussing uh, an ACT class at Ravenna. It's an all-day class. Yeah. How are we handling that with kids that want to do that? Because it's on a Thursday. Yeah, we're they're, we're doing the ACT boot camp, and it is a December third, fifth, one fifth. fifth. Yeah, on a third, that's right. Is right. That two they're allowed to go to that? Yes, that would be an excused absence. Okay. For them. We had to essentially pay a fee to be able to let our students go to that. And then there's a fee associated with the parents as well. So yeah. X amount of dollars per student. Um, very discounted. Though. Very discounted. Very discounted. It's a, essentially, it's a day long program on test taking strategies. They're not going to be able to teach the materials. They're going to be able to give you tips and tricks to try to, um, you know, you, they say that every time you take the ACT over, your score can sway one to three points. You're going to get a monumental change. But this may then give you an advantage to get that higher of the score if you sit in this. Now, this is the first time we're trying this. Um, I think that uh, six hours of this in an auditorium is an awful lot for anybody's attention span. Uh, so we're eager to kind of see how it works. Uh, I think it's a nice thing to offer, um, but we'll, uh, time will tell if it's something that we want to continue. You said we're doing a boot camp? That's what so it's called, an ACT boot camp. That's what Ravenna is, what we're doing. We're doing it, it's at Ravenna. Are the students required to get themselves there? Yes. Okay. They're required. Yeah, they're required to do their own training. And that's December 5th. December 5th. No. Well, we, we should have gotten something in the mail, Steve. I did. Yeah. I just got it. Like yeah, yesterday. It was sent because it was, it was just finalized last week. So I would have sent it out on check it out. Monday or Tuesday. My daughter's already taken it, so the ACP, because I told her to take it as soon as you can take it, and more time, the more apprehension is. is probably the, the worst thing. You don't know what to expect going in there. And it is such an important part of, of uh, where they're at now and what opportunities will be available and, and as well as scholarships and things of that nature that are based on, on those scores. Um, you know, so it, it's, it's a great opportunity. I think they said there's like 27 different practice tests that they will have available to them. Uh, and I know I went outside and bought a private thing over the computer that she didn't utilize uh, as much as she should have. Well, send her to an auditorium she was trapped. Yeah, so if you trap her in an auditorium, she's got to focus a little bit. But uh, it is, a, it is a, a critical thing. It's an important thing. It's a good opportunity to kind of get that apprehension set aside so that uh, no one likes to take tests. but the more comfortable you are with the test, <laughs> the better you're going to do. So. The company showed promising results in statistics. You just never know if that's going to be applicable to us or not. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to try one year. Uh, we had some concerns about timing, and maybe it would be closer to do better, maybe with a time when more of them were taking the test on average. Um, but this is when, we, this is when the, we went together with other schools to get the price lower. Um, to get the group rate. So we'll see how it goes and, and then we'll reevaluate. But that's December 5th. And what's the, what's the parent cost of charter? $45. $45. $45. $45. So I think the original cost was $245. Yeah. And the so district is $75. Yeah. Yeah. So and the district is putting some of that to try to make it more feasible. And we didn't want to do it on the weekend or an evening because we didn't think that we would get as good of attendance than if we did it in school. And if we excuse the absences, then there won't be that perfect attendance kind of situation where the students worry about that. Are we still doing the prep class? Currently, no. So that's why I thought this was even more important. We did last year, didn't we? We did. But when I asked so far, the, for, the response that I got was no, which hinged on why I thought this was so important to offer. Who we can have further Who was the response from the, I mean, if there's a no from students, didn't want to take it? Um, I don't, well, I know who I received a no from, but we'll have to talk more about the rationale of why that is. Yeah, because that, that's one of those things that, you know, there's, there's probably nothing we can do to help 
students get scholarships very good it would be a larger impact than improve their ACT score. I mean, there's nothing. I know I my nephew both, as soon as they hit twenty eight, they got half their tuition paid for right? the four years. As soon as they hit twenty eight on their ten weeks. And that's you know, you get you get at thirty, thirty two and then you can go then you can go full tuition. But I mean it's just it's something we can do with, with this definitely can make a huge impact on our families. Yeah, I mean all the D three schools when we went with grading, <coughs> basically their minimum before we could even get any money was like a twenty seven. That's D three, that's you know, it's private so, but and because one year we Debbie Morgan used to teach it and she retired and you clipped it well. and I clipped it for a couple of years. So I don't know how many years. That was all I had. <laughs> Anybody, uh, Mr. Fletcher? I just had one other thing since the Lord is here. I think um, the cards that go out, um, Matt and I talked a little bit this. I don't know if you've had a chance to talk to him. But, um, we have a, and this also, when we were talking earlier about Matt's argument against Brian's argument. Um, when my, when my daughter was a freshman, she got a pick for the leadership award at school. And I was more, I, I, didn't told, talk her, to I told her I was more proud of that than, than even if she could have point out because that meant she was a well-known student. She was not just a good student as far as grades. It meant that she was a good person and she did things for others. And, and when my kids were small, we lived in Stone, they did a whole parade of kids for character. And, and it was just, it was massive. It was a huge thing back then. But anyway, um, to me, that's always been important. So that was something that with the cards that are going out. The pride cards. The pride cards. If, if, um, if somehow that, if you knew even about the leadership the brunch leadership, that we do. There's a leadership brunch in the spring that we do. And the criteria has always been they <coughs> best. Yeah. And Lisa's idea is to tie that into students who have got pride cards or earned pride cards, and maybe that can be a component of the criteria uh, moving forward. And I thought that was a uh, what it was in the past. It was um, they would get bussed over to the um, fairgrounds, and they they would get um, they would have lunch. Their parents were invited. They, they would have lunch, and most of the kids, when you ask them, you would say. You know what you got this for, and they had no clue. So, which was kind of neat in a way, but at the same time, um, it got to the point where the teachers really didn't have a clue. So, what was happening was, um, what it's about is basically, let's say you're, you know, someone's on crutches and they're trying to get through the door, and three people walk by and don't even try, and then the one does. You know, that's important. You know, or. Um, they see someone struggling in class and they go over and, you know, talk to them. Little things like that. The things that make you have good character. And so, and I'm sure, I think that's what your pride cards are doing. So, I, in my opinion, it would be a great match for those two things. Plus, since you're educating the teachers on how to pick the pride cards, then when that leadership brunch comes together, then it would be a whole We've had to go back to where we have it here at the school because um, because of funding. So we haven't had it at the fairgrounds for the last couple of years. But um, but you know we're real and, and we do that. And they have a speaker come. And we've had several <coughs> wonderful wonderful speakers. One and, was particularly uh, nice. Well, what's that? One was particularly nice. I think he was a beekeeper, wasn't he? He was a beekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> last year, Matt talked last year. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Andy, you threw her off. Of I know. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> lost her an answer. Well, no, I'm thinking. I was actually, I'm looking at Frank and Barb Russell in this one here. Frank's uh, Yeah, I, I, I spoke at that thing. Yeah, and, and you know, so I mean, we've had some really inspiring people um, talk, and, and Matt was great with all his um, YouTube things last year. <laughs> Him and YouTube. But it's just, it's just a really, it, it just, to me, that's something that encompasses Waterloo students because that's what we're building here. And yes, we'd love to be excellent with the state of the
I was surprised when we hit that too, but, but there's just that, there's just something about that that, you know, I feel like we're unique here at Waterloo, so that's more than that. But I just thought, so. I can go on, you know, I can go to the same Sure, we did have the Veterans Day Veterans Day breakfast, and we weren't here. I was here for you, It was well attended. Right? It was very well. I wasn't in the elementary school, so at the high school one. Mr. Pugh got a one spoke in his Navy uniform, and he did such a wonderful job. All of a sudden, he was talking, and all these little ones up front. Of course, they always want to raise their hand when they say, "Any other veterans want to speak?" And then there's a kid yeah. you know, they end up. But all of a sudden, he was speaking, and just out of nowhere, it, it still gives me shivers. These little ones turned around and went, "Thank you." And I'm telling you, if it didn't bring tears to your eyes, you were, did it? Mr. Pugh, and oh, he was in um, his yes. Navy uniform. It was, in the second grade. Um, sang and um, some of the fifth graders did a little skit of what for what is a veteran and it was it was one of the best ones I guess we've had. It yeah was, he actually came up to me well I had a navy sweatshirt on and he came up to me and said, Can you take a picture of me with my, my brother? We've never really had a picture of us in our uniforms ever. Oh and he stood up there at the end it's like some of the so little ones were filing by and he's shaking their hands and they were in awe. Well and it's funny because he looked at me and he said I don't know if you know who I am. I'm like, of course I know who you are. But it was just really funny the way he said it. And I said, now I'll get, I'll get the pictures to you. He goes, well, do you know where I live? I said, yes, I know where you live. I know who you are. You're one of the, he was one of the founders of the athletic boosters. He was one of those. Yeah. Originally, he was one. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank the food was amazing. I didn't eat, but I snacked a little bit on touch, taste it, and taste it. But um, it was, they did a great job with eating the breakfast. So the people were really, really thrilled. So we had, I mean, we had Don Knapp there that, who was in the Battle of the Bulge in the Army. And um, just, it was, it, it's really special because they really, it's a great way to get them in the building. And once they're in the building, they, they like to stay. So it's a little hard to move them along, but uh, that's okay. But it was great. They did a great job. Uh, our new social studies teacher, Nathan Peters, was the MC. He, even though he's got acting experience and everything else, he was a little nervous. So, yeah. but uh, it was it was good. It was very good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anything else before we move on? Bring us to the consent agenda. Uh, there's a couple things I want to draw your attention to. Um, item C is, <coughs> is the updated policy, or I guess the updated policy, <coughs> policies. And these are ones that I, some of them I've talked about in the update. I sent you a copy of these. Uh, Brett Manny, yeah, Pebble, and Wagner are in charge of our policies. And, in lieu of all of the changes with the budget bill and the changes in legislation, um, he went through and updated everything that we needed to make sure we were in compliance with those um, existing and new requirements. So you'll see uh, six of those listed. Uh, also, item D, you will see that um, Lee Kackner has resigned. And as you know, he is one of our um, pastors and ministers in the community for Life Point Church, and his schedule gets increasingly busy this time of year. And he is, um, he will stop driving at this time because of that. Um, he is an outstanding uh, gentleman and um, he was a part of um, the past week and supported us in our time. Kind of he really is a, a very uh, nice gentleman. Will he pick back up in the spring? I don't know, he didn't tell me. So he has to resign because he's not able to be on call, is that how it works? Yes. Um, and that's all I have that, um, in the consent agenda that I want to draw attention to. Okay, anything from. Oh, can I say something else? 
I'm yes. sorry. Um, item E, uh, Jim Guy donated um, a, a microscope that he had to the high school science department. And he said a lot of people were interested in it, but he wanted to make sure that he gave it to us. And I was very appreciative of that. Um, we'll, we'll, take your, we'll take your items. Um, and we'll what? Let me what? Item E. Item E. It's on the last, yeah. on the last page of the agenda. Oh, oh, okay. I thought you meant E under yours. No, I'm sorry. Okay. E. Oh, sorry. Like, but he on. donated that um, within the last month. Mm -hmm. And I made sure that um, Mr. Riley and Mr. Crawford and Mrs. Knight were aware. Uh, so we can. Have we given him a thank you? I sent him a thank you card. Thank you. Okay. Anything from Tom on the agenda? Okay, can we have a motion to accept the items listed under 10 consent agenda? So moved. That's right. Any comments or questions? Just thanks to Mr. Guy for the microscope. We certainly do appreciate that. Okay, we'll call this time. Go. Yes. We will see. Yes. Mr. Perry? Yes. Fletcher? Yes. John? Yes. I know. I just thought of something else when you said about the microscope that I wanted to say and I forgot. You are out of order. Okay. <laughs> Please do not. Okay. Speaking, well, when you said the names, um, the, the advanced biology class, here at Waterloo, which is a new class mm -hmm. that's taught by um, Ken Riley and Megan Nyland. Um, they took a field trip, sort of field trip, to the Cleveland Zoo. And they had, um, we had about 10 kids go, and uh, they went back, um, what is it, back water or whatever, and, um, and they were able to uh, had an armadillo and do some things backstage, and, and they basically what they what they were learning is what Megan and Ken are learning in their um, master's program. So it was a way for another thing with college. You know, if they're interested in that sort of thing, they were learning what they were what they would learn in a, in a master's program, being in zoology or biology or whatever. And so they were there all day. It was cold and rainy and miserable, but, but um, the kids really, they really um, learned how to study the animals. And I went inside the drive somewhere and so, um, but it was, it was very informative and very good. I wanted to commend them on that. that was they've, worked really, they've been working really hard on that course and in biology. You and we tend hearing to, a lot of good things about that course. In biology, you tend to um, not get beyond cellular biology, so you're looking at the micro level, and it's nice to be able to take it to the next step, which is you know, the evolutionary process where we're getting more advanced uh, organisms and seeing them in Sorry, I, that was the thing. I kept thinking all day, there was something else that I needed to say, and I just remembered it when you said about the kids microscope. Seem to be able to bear the weather better than us. <laughs> they were fine. Yeah, oh my gosh, they were fine. The so. worst thing was there was only one restaurant open in the whole thing, and oh. it, so they went in the rainforest. Because they were mostly boys. But uh, the, the rain in that didn't bother me, it's just they were hungry. So. <laughs> Eagles. Good. Yeah. That's good to hear. It's good to hear. Sorry about that. That's okay. No, thanks for thanks for remembering. That's good. I would rather, I'm one of those people who would rather go to a zoo than an amusement park. It was great. So, whatever it was, so great. Okay, bring us to item 11. We have a motion to. Do you need to make this one? Do you need to make this one? You need to make this one. You need to make this one. You need to make this one. So number, or item 11, we're going, I'm going to recommend to adopt the 6.44 drug testing policy, and it is a new policy. Okay, maybe we have a motion to adopt the uh, policy. So moved. <coughs> second, please. Well, second. Any comments or questions? <coughs> I guess yes, you, can, can I make a, a comment? You mind? No, you can't. Okay. Um, as long as you don't say what I was going to say. I'm just kidding. No, I, I uh, this capital conference, 
um, couldn't have come at a better time for me in reference to this drug testing policy because I have been personally struggling with this. Um, I see a lot of pros, I see some cons to it. <clears throat> but I had the opportunity to uh, this week to, we all had our little badges on and it said, you know, superintendent or board member on it. And any of you that know me very well know I'm not shy. And I, I went up and when I would see a board member or superintendent, I'd, I'd pull them aside and introduce myself and talk to them. And I'd say, what, you know, this is what we're thinking about. What do you guys think? And uh, I, I really didn't get any negative responses as far as, you know, uh, the, the drug testing. And, and you know, there, a lot of the people were in very urban areas. Um, a lot of them were in the same situation we are, you know, 1,100, 1,200 kids, whatever. Um, I did have the opportunity to speak to some board members and superintendents that have the drug policy. They have an active, random drug testing policy. And uh, they all feel very confident that by using this, not necessarily to destroy a kid's life and that was never their intent on this thing either it was to use it as a deterrence to give a kid uh, just one extra time one extra chance to do the right thing and uh i i, I spent a lot of time talking to people about this it, it's just I, I don't know how you guys have been doing but it's this is probably the hardest thing that i've ever ever tried to make a decision on you all know how I feel about the kids at this school and any of the kids. You know, I love them all to death and I would never want to do anything to hurt them. But you know what? We don't live in Andy and Opie's world anymore. You know, where, you know, the, the drugs are over in somewhere else, but they're not here. You know, I guess we can sit down and try to tell ourselves or convince ourselves but that we don't have drugs in the school. But I think we all know what the real answer is. So, you know, I, I, I feel better now about the decision that we're about to make in, in my own heart anyway, knowing that, you know, I, I, I think that we have spent enough time on this. And I know that not everybody's going to agree with this. This is not going to be a popular vote, I'm sure. But I would just want to assure everybody that we've done our due diligence on this thing. And our intention is not to hurt any of these kids in any way, shape, or form. I was a kid once, I remember the stupid things I did. Um, it, 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 if this is gonna help a kid, if we if we help one, it's been more worth it to me. So, that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you, Steve. Anybody else? Any comments or questions before we vote? I did have one comment, or maybe two. Um, I believe the company that was out here Great Lakes, not and said that if we put a program in place, they would be willing to come out and attend a parents' meeting. They would conduct a um, and then the education night where all the questions were um, in previous board members, <coughs> previous board meetings, it was just the panel here asking the representatives. They would run the same kind of scenario, but it would be the, the set of you guys in there with the parents asking those types of questions to make sure that all the questions are uh, presented in cover in detail if we need to fill out this board policy. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Um, we're going to vote and then we'll. Um, and I have one more comment. The other thing that I wanted to say is that kind of dovetailing off of what Steve said, this was a very tough decision. and. Um, and I think there were a couple of things that were put in there that that swayed me. Um, in addition to talking about to a lot of people and things like that, that that uh, there were a couple of specific items that I put asked for to be put in where they were included. And one was is that the first offense is not a sentence to being uh, removed from the program, removed from the store, anything like that. The first offense. Is going to carry with it the yeah, that the student will have to receive some kind of counseling and, and continue on some kind of uh, 
um, counseling, help, those kind of things. So, you know, in that, it's not punitive. The idea is to identify the student and then get them the help to hopefully make that the last time that, we, that they're ever in that situation and let them the educational help as well as the counseling and maybe there's, you know, try to get to the root of the issue, um, those kind of things. So that, to me, that was very important. <clears throat> some of the programs, some of the policies that we reviewed, the first time that there was a, a failed drug test, there was a, they were kicked out of 50% of the activities or whatever of that, for that, remaining for that period um, and those kind of things. So I thought it was very important that, that we had that in the policy. And then the ability for parents that, to opt in was also very important to me, just as if your student isn't in the correct or extracurricular activities or in the, uh, uh, doesn't drive to school, but you want your, your student tested, well, you have the right to do that. So those were two things. And I think that, and the idea is there is to, to help, you know, and that is the whole, the whole idea. It's not a, you know, we're not on a witch hunt or anything like that. The whole, whole idea behind the policy is to help. So that's, that was uh, the, the bulk of what I wanted to say. So at this time, Tom? Huh? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Wilson Terry? Yes. Fletcher? Yes. Jones? Yes. Okay. Any, we don't have any other session. Could you? That vote was taken now. I wanted to ask did anyone consider that everything we can purchase a drug test if one is a child tested? I have one in my house. Well then, why? And I don't have any reason not to. I absolutely believe this is a genuine, genuine concern. But, and I trust everyone. But I also have no reason to trust. I have no reason to trust you or not trust you. And you that are there aren't going to be there forever. And this institution, whether this board is here or not, is run by the state. So what's to say in the future that this policy that's adapted isn't just like, wait, we need to know that information. Somebody needs to, in the state or whatever, we've got a healthcare system taking over stuff. We have. Uh, invasion of privacy and security issues <coughs> there's no there's no security about it. Well, so the you're nice basically thing, saying you have to do this the you nice know? thing about this is, is is if this don't work out we can change and what would that mean you're not there anymore well, what if somebody thinks now. this is a great idea and we need to know everything and we're going to do this and we're going to send the information to whoever needs to know it. But the I agreement that, that we're, we're agreeing to with this company is that that is all confidential. They cannot yeah. do that without yeah. litigation. And it's, protected, it's protected information under HIPAA, right? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's protected under HIPAA the same, the same as, as, as okay. the federal, which is the same as, you know, if you me, it's the same as your medical records. Um, and, and, and I, I see no reason, this is my own, I see no reason for, if a student fails, there's no reason for Brian Pusateri or really for any of us board members to ever know that. And that's, I mean, it's, it's, it needs to be a, a, a very confidential uh, well, situation. Well, that's true. But also the cat, if my child is on a medication, what if I don't want you to know? What if I don't want to report it to you? But I have to do it. Well, what not to us. Not to us, you report it to the doctor that it's, it's a bio I still have to tell someone. Yeah. I have to report it. You're making me divulge personal information, which I may not want to tell you. And I don't have to worry about it because my child's not under us. Well, but, not but, but we won't know about it. You're saying you have to divulge it to this doctor. That's I, the, it's the it's not that you're going to know something. It's that you're making us reveal something that we may not want to. And we as parents are protectors of our children's rights. This child doesn't have any rights. You can't go into his bedroom and search his room because you think the school has you think the school has drugs. So why should you think that you could do this? That's even more personal when you say it's Well you have a doctor that prescribes that drug. Then you've got somebody behind the counter, a giant eagle, that fills a prescription. 
then you have some lady who stands at the counter and then takes your money and hands that prescription and they all see it. And I went to those people. You are telling me that I have to give me that information. That's the difference. That is Nobody's going to have that information, but, but the company. But I didn't, you picked the company. I don't know if they're reputable. I don't, you know, you say they are. I have no reason to think they're not. But also, like, but an employer could pick a company and make you do it, too. It's the same thing. No, it's not. Yeah, it, it is. No, it's not because it's my decision to submit work to there. Yeah, to work there. Yeah, true. And if you have this, in this district, and you this can is not sign it too. You can also not sign it. Yeah. So then he doesn't get to do something, right? But just like if you if you don't want to work at that company, then you don't work at the company. So then you don't have, you know you don't have that job. But it, it, it is kind of the same thing. And if it, it and the other thing that you referred to was you buying a test and having your child do it. Yeah. You're saying you don't trust us. Well, how? What do we have to say that? that parent is making sure that that child is the one that's going in that cup. There's no guarantee of that. None, the this is our is, only option. The thing is, he's your responsibility, he or she is your responsibility to protect him right. when he's in this school. And every other child here. And every other child here. So if there's drugs or something going on in this school, it is your responsibility. If some child did something on Saturday night and you test him on Monday, that has nothing to do with him being in school today. It will be still, uh, if, if it's still shown positive, then it does have something to do with it. And really? Is, 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 there a all all is there a disciplinary problem in the school at this time? Is all this really bad disciplinary problem? Ultimately, Melinda, right now, we have spent four months, at least four months, discussing this. Mm -hmm. The board has done their due diligence and weighed out the pros and cons. And while you are presenting the cons, they feel like, based on their vote, the pros outweigh them. And now, as a parent, you have heard the board's decision, and it is your, um, it's your responsibility as a parent then to make those difficult decisions that's best for you as a, as a family. And, and and we respect that. But at this point, that's we believe that the pros outweigh the cons. And as much cons as you're presenting right now, they have spent months thinking about that list and you heard how they voted and we're going to move forward accordingly so what i would tell you is that we'll answer any questions you have but the decision has been made and now lies with you on how you are going to move forward as a parent when does it go into effect we haven't determined that yet. right well, now i know from my daughter there's a lot of if it starts if it starts tomorrow call it too so, I mean, there's a lot of misinformation. The kids are speculating. Uh, there's, you know, a lot of apprehension. I think it's somewhat over the top, a little bit unwarranted, but that's one reason why, you know, this is said and done. Let's move forward. Let's do the education process. Yeah. Let's make people more comfortable to know exactly what's going to happen and, uh, and get rid of some of the speculation in the unwarranted uh, drama that's surrounding it. And I think yeah. the education is the key. But, yeah, I'm speaking of take enough time to educate. <coughs> oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Is what? the policy? No, it's out not going to be posted on the website. I think that will help. Yeah. 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 It's, it's going to be posted on the website if all the other policies were. Right. Technically, it's in effect now. But there's no, it's not like we're going to go. be an issue. We're not going to have a great We need to have the parent meeting. And, 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 student meetings. and student meetings and all that kind of stuff. And then at some point, we, you know, at some point it's going to be, once all that stuff's completed, then there'll be an initial phase and, 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 and everything's going to be random. We're not going a baseline or anything like that. It's going to be random. So it's going to be a certain percentage of the students that are involved in, uh, this will be winners, and winter, acti and winter activities as well as plus the the additional extra quicker, you know, all those kids being a poll in the poll, they will select a certain number of percentage of what students out. So. And then I will say one thing, and we'll get to you, John. Um, you know, this was this was a trying vote on all of us. I mean, <coughs> you're not wrong. I mean, we see your point of view. 
Um, and it's and we've taken it into consideration, but for your point of view, we've got, you know, a, a load of evidence of other points of view that we have to consider also. Not only that, but our personal, um, you know, preferences. Uh, it, it isn't without a great deal of anguish. Uh, Steve and I have talked a number of times about this. Uh, so we, we don't take it lightly. And we, we definitely want to take, we've taken our time to try to do this one time and do it right. And doing it is, is, is methodical and is, is cautious uh, and considerate as we possibly can. And the same thing will go as far as the initiation of this. We will do what's necessary to make sure that, that there is a comfort level uh, out there and that we are as non-intrusive and that we can provide as much confidence in the program and what our intentions are as we possibly can. If that takes a week, if it takes a month, if it takes six months, we will do what's necessary to initiate this uh, in a manner that is both competent and has the confidence in the community uh, or the majority of the community. Uh, as to what our intentions are and, and that uh, the results are satisfactory. And I think that's the best that we as a board can do. Um, and with that said, we've got John in the back. Yeah, part of my question has already been answered because I was going to ask when I would get a copy or see the, the policy in effect. So if it's online, I'll grab it off uh, of the website. Uh, I have one other question, and Steve mentioned this at one of the meetings. Is there a provision or is there something written in there that when the student's name is pulled, are you going to contact the parents? It is not, John, it's not written in the policy. However, that's going to be our, be, our uh, practice. That's um, going to be yeah, a procedure. But, but we've been okay. advised, we try to keep as the policy as minimalistic as possible right. to be in accordance with the law and to not negate any of the results should we not follow it to a T. Right, so there'll be kind of a. It'll be it'll be me expressing to whomever is 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 aware of it that we would like the parents to be contacted, but it will not be mandated because then we could put well, ourselves. That's what I'm saying. It's it's yeah. It would be an understanding. Oh, it's a mutual understanding. That's very good. That's all I have. I I did have uh, there was a lot of I, I I talked to a lot of people about this, and I do know that I I heard a lot of we'll be watching to see what happens at your your district there's a lot of, of the schools a lot of bigger schools that and, and even schools our size that want to do this but i guess for some reason or another they just haven't pulled the trigger on it but they want to see what the reaction is and, and um so i I'm not going to say we're trendsetters or trailblazers or whatever, but I mean, I, I think that you're going to start seeing this a lot more. A lot more. So, you're in charge. You, Ryan. Sure. But there's just six people here. Why don't you go to all families and get their vote on it? We, yeah. did, we did a survey. Yeah. And yeah. What was your response to that survey? I've never seen any numbers. Um, I can see I can see. I can send it to you. There was about a hundred responses per uh, stakeholder group. So, hundred does that mean? That means um, so for we we did the parents, we did the students, we did the teachers, and we tried to keep them separate. And then we also did you know. So I sent out a to the distribution list that you're probably a member of. And there's 454 people on that list that are made up of community members and parents. So we had about, our N number was about 100 per group. I can give you all those detailed responses. So out of your total population of, of families that have kids in this district, what was your percentage of response? Approximately 70, oh, uh, the total. Out the of total 1,200 kids, you got a I don't know, I don't have parents, families? I don't have those numbers, but you I can get them to What them. percentage of response? I can get that information. And was it statistically valid? Well, we we can I can show you all that stuff. I can email it off. Okay. Did the same thing with the Niagara was, Beacon. I sent it already. And it about. was probably close to 70%. It was 70% in favor of policy of the responses that we oh, received. The responses you got. Yes, I remember that. But how many responses did you get? And I'll show you all that. Question. 
But, it's a self -select but, group. but, but why then again, you know, this is something like that is self selected. People who are in favor of it are going to respond to the people who are against it, or they're going to make a movie to do this. So they don't respond. So you have to hear it. You have to look at it. Yeah, they can be the other. How are you going to, uh, but how do you, how do you get a survey then if you're, if, if people aren't going to respond? Mm -hmm. you, you throw it out there, it's the best you can do. I mean, you can't, you can't force people it's to respond. It's just like when 25% of the people go to the polls. 28%. 28%. But I, I mean, you can't. All we can do is is go with, with the information that we have. And I've talked to a lot of people since that survey was done that, for whatever reason, they didn't fill out the survey. And I, I have no reason why. I mean, I, 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 there, there's no benefit for me. My kids are going to be subject to this test. But I, I talked to a lot of the parents who said that they're all for it. And, and they wondered, they, there was a lot of parents that thought we already had some. Well, that's disturbing in itself, that if they think that you're doing stuff to their kids and they don't even know for sure. Right. I, I, you're going to hear all kinds of stuff. Some of the stuff I hear on a daily basis is not just about school, but life in general just baffle me. <laughs> but Congress has a 9% approval rating today, and they're changing their, their laws every day, which you have to live by. Nine percent. We voted on that. Well, we I, I've made a commitment, and believe me, if I see this thing not going in the in the direction I think it should be, I'm going to make some noise to, to change it. Are you ready? What is the total cost per year? I heard that thirty-one hundred. Is that? I can't believe that these great these people are going to come here as many times as they want right? per year. So thirty-one hundred dollars. The entire year. Brad, I have a question. The survey that was sent out, I totally approve. It's the only way you're going to any kind of uh, feeling of how the community feels in the future. My question was, I don't think it was enough. Evidently, the detail of this thing will come later, word by word, who's going to be tested, what age group, uh, from kindergarten or the middle school on up. Well, all those details have been given out, right? You can say all the more than all that. 12, right? But that is the evidence to change. It's, when it's, it's read, nine, when you read it's nine through 12 right now. Nine okay. through 12. We were originally talking about seven through 12, and based on feedback that we got from the responses, we're doing nine through 12. But somewhere it will be put in that the people of this community will know for the student or the parents of the kids which ones will be students, and is it all athletes or everybody in general? You no, know, it's extracurriculars, interscholastic sports, and parking. Uh, uh, the question I had when you did the survey before, I don't know if we ever got that answer, was the teacher. I think some of your personnel in the school right now are being tested as they drive a bus. That's correct. Are the teachers that teach our kids, same as me as anybody in the industry, being tested. Or is it against their, their agreement through the union? I don't know if it's against it, but it's not included in it. But it could be, but you did right? I mean, so we negotiate over the contract every X amount of years. So when, when the next time their contract comes up, that could be possibly put in. It could be discussed. I think where a lot of the parents would say it was unjust was you're not testing the people that teach our kids. In the industry, we're randomly call off of a job to go down at one or ten o'clock in the morning and be tested, and they do get the help just like you're doing. I think it's really a positive thing. So, like you were saying that before, if you save one person, to me, it's worth it. If you just drive around here and see some of the people in different communities, we have to. They, there's a problem out there. It's going to work. There's some new drugs came out. In the last two weeks, I've heard that will absolutely take the kid out. I spoke to Sheriff Oak about it, and he said that he considered it to be an epidemic. Drugs and the meth and the coke and the heroin are an epidemic proportion in our community. And, and, and I apologize, I don't remember the exact number, but there was something like some ridiculous number of meth places busted just in, in our community. And we aren't the leaders, he said. Portage County had 90 drug busts so far this year. 90? 90, 90, 90 meth houses, right? Drug, drug 
uh, where the drug task force is shut from yeah. down 90, 90, 90 places in Portage County and this ain't even the end of the year yet. Yeah. So I mean, that's, so, and, and that's pretty significant considering the time and effort it takes to get enough, in, enough information and enough evidence to be able to, I mean, you don't sit there for a day and then go, go close a place down. It takes a lot of investigation, a lot of history, and a lot of evidence to do that. <coughs> so, I mean, think about that. that. That's pretty significant. He considered it to be, like I said, he considered it, he considers it to be an epidemic. Um, and I talked to to a lot of different people, and um, a few people called me that I, that I know that said that they were not paid for it. And I, and I, at that time, we didn't have in there the, the, the first offense does not, if you get counseling after the first offense, it doesn't exclude you from anything. So and that was one of the things that we got, we added in there. But I talked to probably, I would say over 30 kids that have graduated in the, within the last five years of Waterloo and some in call, and, and additionally college students from not from our school district about this. And everyone said it's a good idea. You should do it. Everyone, not, I mean, nobody even hesitated. And, and I didn't say, hey, I'm sorry? They're out of school. Yeah. So, I mean, I well, they say. well, they're only out of school within the last, I mean, they're, you know, and there's a lot of colleges that are drug testing around. 18 to 20, there's a lot of colleges that are drug testing. I'm looking at that. Yeah. NCA does it. I think NCA does it. I mean, I know John has tested a couple times a year. I'm going to go next Monday to a chemical plant up in Michigan, and before I'm allowed in the door, I'm going to get, I'm going to get drug tested and breath of so, I mean, it's just, it's just way it is. so if we can help, if we can identify kids and help them now, hopefully that, it, they won't have to go through that problem either. So, and, and but we are you the helping ones. the ones that need the help? That's the thing. You have well, the, listen, the, listen, the, listen. Doing nothing is not helping. Doing nothing is not helping. Do we have a disciplinary problem here? This, the, case, the case that brought about is a drug test was in Oregon, the football players had an influence on the community, they were defiant, they said, you can't touch us, and they threw their arms up. So that was a probable cause to do it. It was a problem. So then they expanded to uh, extracurricular. Well, then the Supreme Court says, well, they have a duty to uh, their tutelary responsibility. Well, that's just expanding it a little bit more, saying it's like vaccinations. What's well, not like vaccination? A vaccination stops a disease. This is behavior. This is behavior. It's not something somebody's going to catch from somebody. It's a decision that they make. Well, actually, technically, if somebody's a drug addict, addict or an alcoholic, they could, that's considered a disease. It's a disease after they decide to take that drink. Yes. Right. It's not, you're not going to sit next to somebody, you're not going to touch something that they touch and catch measles. <coughs> it's not like that. That's the purpose of vaccinations, and the court equated it to that. That's, it's not the same. But that's as what much as about. it is a help to those who do get tested positive, it's also a deterrent for a lot of others that, uh, that will hopefully help them make wise decisions. I think we're all looking to have into a conference. Yeah, I mean, as we move forward, but I think that we should. We're going to do this out of the school. Yeah, we're going to continue to monitor. We're going to implement and make sure we do, have done. Been very, I mean, we've been very open and honest with everybody. We have not tried to hide anything. Everything's been right here in front of, in front of everybody. So, and we're going to continue to offer that. Way, so, um, okay. Do you have a motion to adjourn? I'm sorry. Can I just add something? I was, I, I'm sorry. Uh, that's okay. My name is Tracy Stollard, and uh, the drug testing, I agree with, but the point is we need more drug awareness. Drug awareness has to be pushed. I mean. We've already talked about I'm, that. Yes. Yeah. I'm, yeah. We need, if I could talk to you later, I mean, I have people and friends that would be willing to come to the school myself and speak to the students on <coughs> The facts of what happens at home. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. That's good, and that's one of the things that is a sidebar of this is is the we're going to we're going to look at our drug education process and what we're doing all the grade levels. Yeah. I mean, there's there's nice for fourth and fifth graders, but they forget that I dared you 
right. not to use drugs when they get to seventh, eighth, and ninth. Right. And it, it doesn't get better. It, if you don't stop it now, you have to save one person's child. Right. I have a client that's a nurse at the hospital, and um, I see her quite often. And she told me she works in the ER, and she has seen a lot of drug overdose at the hospital. And she said that's exactly what our school needs. She's a resident here, too, that we need to bring in people like that to talk to our students. Because she said, the very first thing every time that well, they, I don't know what they do to bring that student or child no. to whatever <laughs> it is, but she said the very first thing they say is, please don't tell my parents. So we, we do need that drug awareness. We really do. Yeah, the yeah, the drug awareness you have, I mean, if, if not, I'm just saying it's the truth. They can't be told, you know, yeah. drugs are bad, snap your hand. I mean, they honestly need to be told the truth. Okay. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Roll call, please, Tom. Young? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Chair? Yes. Fletcher? Yes. Jones? Yes. Thank you.